Great, thank you, Martina. And and from, from my side, thank you to all of the speakers from session one. It was a really instructive uh, forum and, and exciting uh, discussion during the, the panel Q&A. Uh, so my name is Ben Pierce, Operations Manager for the Imperial Hub. And I'll be chairing um, session two, focusing on the UKVN vaccine manufacturing research hubs and our roles in global manufacturing capacity building. Uh, I will be assisted by co-chair uh, Paul Katenwe, um, our early career researcher uh, based in Uganda. And I, may I ask all the speakers to be uh, promptly ready uh, to take control of slides and uh, we'll need, need to be a, a bit strict on keeping to time because we are now running over. Um, so I will begin by giving a very brief uh, summary of our activities. Um, and it will, I will do my very best to include as many exemplars as I can and apologies to those that uh, I just could not fit in uh, for the interest of time. So our hub, and this is one hub based at Imperial, it's a global organization. Um, it's, it's mostly based in the UK. On the left of your screen, you will see UK-based research institutes. Um, and, uh, you'll, you can read the logos yourselves. There's NHS Blood and Transplant. Uh, at King's College is a new member, uh, previously Cranfield University. And I'd like to highlight the inclusion of Center of Process Innovation um, and National Institute of Biological Standards and Care. And all of these uni universities and research institutes or centers link through eight work streams with um, vaccine manufacturers in developing countries, whether that's uh, MI Hisson in Dalian, China, uh, Hilleman Labs in India, Incepta in Bangladesh, but by uh, apologies, uh, UVRI, the Uganda Viral Research Institute in Uganda, the biotech in Vietnam, GSK, but primarily the GSK Vaccines for Global Health, uh, GVGH, based in Siena, and Developing Countries Vaccine Manufacturing Network, or DCVMN, a consortium of 42 um, member companies uh, located in developing countries. Very proud to have expanded our, our reach and breadth and depth in just uh, a very brief time, I mean, less than three years of activities, to introduce and welcome new members, University of Leeds, BioE in India, Minhai from China, uh, and UK SMEs, MBio and Exivian, who have linked with CPI and NIBSC to uh, expand and, and inform further on their uh, vaccine candidates against um, Zika and pneumococcal uh, disease, and NSC. Uh, a company that's linking with uh, Robin Shattuck to look towards a solid-based implant for saRNA delivery. The need for the hub was was quite clear in 2017, but the reasons were different. Uh, as Steve mentioned, the world has changed. We now have other additional reasons for uh, more improved and further uh, vaccine manufacturing research, but then it was based on population growth mostly, that there's a need for more vaccines and better manufacturing and, and further high quality technologies and innovation to be um, injected in the manufacturing pipelines that are directed to impact ODA, official development assistance or developing countries, simply based on population growth more people means more doses are needed. However, as we've all experienced uh, quite tragically, uh, the world has, has been turned upside down. Um, there are other reasons now, and it's not only health-based, but economic-based as well. And simple investment uh, in, in research at earlier stages can drastically, uh, uh, can significantly avoid um, economic uh, shakeups to the global economy. And here's just one bit of data that I've taken from the BBC. Of course, you can find other uh, examples as well. That's in addition to the horrible toll that we've seen in terms of health that's affected most of us on some personal level. But the way, pardon me, the way we set up the hub was a, a bit different rather than focusing on pathogens of interest. We worked on platform technologies, and Robin touched on this in, in one of his responses, that really our, our activities are based on four pillars of research, uh, and they're, they're each shown here. One is generalized modules for membrane antigens, or GEMMA for short. This is led from the GVGH GSK group from Siena, Francesca Micoli, and Elena Palmieri, and this is uh, this derives from uh, gram-negative bacteria that produce outer membrane vesicles that are engineered to, to uh, upscale and, and um, uh, produce further amounts of these uh, vesicles. And these are really powerful technology and highly mature um, technology that have 
been further developed through links with the NIBSC and Imperial College as well. Now you will hear more about the second and third technology shown here from talks of following uh, uh, Martinez after me, which is baclovirus. Uh, this is led by Professor Emery Berger from the University of Bristol. And you'll hear from Dr. Dotuan Dat from the biotech, who's linked with Professor Berger uh, on collaborations and, and tech transfer secondments and, and looking to take up uh, this innovative technology and new way of making vaccines in Vietnam. Yeast are a, a traditional uh, platform of creating vaccines, but we have innovative strains as well of interest here. And you will hear from uh, uh, Manuel um, Ahesan, a, a researcher lead from Incepta in Bangladesh and, and, and how that company has learned of tech transfer and received training from researchers at Imperial College. We're also looking at other strains of yeast, Saccharomyces from Zhaoning Zhu uh, and others in the hub to, to help the development of new vaccines against um, uh, other pathogens. And we've all now know much more about RNA from the last year, but of course, as recent as today with Robin's uh, talk, but what um, I think I'd like to emphasize here is the strong links within the hub between Robin's team and institutions like uh, GSK, NHSBT, NIBSC, CPI, and the Uganda Viral Institute as well, um, towards pushing, uh, pushing this technology further. Now, a, a common thread throughout is our use of quality by design. This involves our Department of Chemical Bioengineering, Nile Shaw, Cleo Kantaravni, um, a really strong early career researcher, Zoltan Kiss, uh, are, are just a few that I would like to point out. Um, modeling is used to help support this and regulatory alignment with feedback and input uh, support from NIBSC. In addition to that, all of these vaccine technologies are supported by really exciting uh, research activities in uh, delivery systems, whether that be uh, new polymer systems from Professor Cameron Alexander, uh, Pratik Gurnani from the University of uh, Nottingham, uh, polymer-based systems from Professor Molly Stevens' group at Imperial, or uh, vesicle-based systems from Rongjun Chin and his group. Um, and these are all supported by other kinds of carrier technologies, such as ionic liquids from Professor J Jason Hallett's group at Imperial uh, with support from uh, early career researcher Talia Shmuel. And I'll make a, a one ex exemplar from, from that team in, in just a couple of, of slides. So with these exciting technologies, we are at liberty to choose amongst dozens of pathogens. And in 2017, a lot of these decisions were based on not only priority pathogens as determined by the UK VN, but the number of epidemics that are, uh, have arisen in the preceding years. And here's one example uh, based on data collected by the Wellcome Trust. And a number of these pathogens are focused on uh, by the hub, and that has expanded in less than three years' time. Um, shown here are uh, pathogens of interest in some way um, and some ex very heavily as core strains of, of activity. And very excitingly, through careful and close uh, change management, we were able to take on SARS-CoV-2 within um, an extremely uh, excitingly rapid amount of time. And that's under uh, the experiences of lockdowns in institutions uh, located in China that saw the first national lockdown in Northern Italy, that saw the second major national lockdown and the UK. And so thankful to all hub members that uh, continued and remained, uh, they persevered through a very um, stressful time for, for themselves and, and the rest of the world. And through uh, this experience, uh, we've, we're very proud to uh, show off our training. Now, this includes secondments of international staff members from vaccine manufacturers in Uganda, Bangladesh, and China to labs at Imperial College London and Vietnam, uh, and staff members from Vietnam to the University of Bristol. Very kind uh, contributions uh, from uh, companies such as Dash in partnership with Brompton Bikes to uh, donate foldable bikes for some of our, our team members and the Shattuck team. And through, through these efforts and this team, an open collaborative based um, relationship, uh, very proud to announce that we recently were awarded the Imperial President's Award for Outstanding Research Team. So well done to all of the um, lab-based researchers, pr particularly for that. Very proud to have alumni coming out uh, from the hub and, and take on independent research um, opportunities, but also training workshops that have been received by developing country, uh, 
vaccine manufacturers based in developing countries. Um, I was uh, blessed to be able to join and, and, and organize a quality by design workshop delivered in Hanoi, Vietnam in November, just before the first outbreaks of, of COVID-19. That was attended by over 50 DCVMN member company staff and really exciting outcomes to then. And, and it, was, it was exciting to see the eagerness of com these companies to take on innovative ways of using quality by design um, and, and well done to Zoltan Kiss from our hub and Maria uh, Papathanasia from the Vax Hub as well. That was one of our first uh, joint efforts. Um, early career researchers, Rochelle All, uh, Fru Rabbi, and uh, Parisa Masami, co chair of the next session, deliver a really nice, uh, innovative strain yeast based and baclovirus based manufacturing workshop to DCVMN members uh, during the, the lockdowns in May 2020. So that was one of the first virtual events to come from that. And we are planning other events and activities are ongoing, including RNA vaccine training program planned in, in Uganda in September 2021. We are uh, just as proud as our uh, outputs, and this is a selected list. Um, this is absolutely not exhaustive. I'm um, pleased perhaps from the recording, you're able to uh, find more information at, at, at your leisure by looking at these DOIs and a range of uh, technologies being described here. And it's, it's not, but only based on vaccine technologies. But one example here is the identification of linoleic acid as uh, a binding factor within the, the a glycoprotein pocket of the SARS-CoV-2 um, antigen. And that, that's from Professor Emery Burgess group with substantial support from our hub. Robin Shattuck has been uh, on the media. I hear my boss's voice late in the evening sometimes. And uh, so thanks to him for all of his media engagement and that of all vaccine researchers and spokespeople um, from, from the hubs and, the, and some that are in attendance today. We have been uh, quite active in policy engagement. Um, we have visited and met with international members uh, from uh, policy forum meetings or uh, personal visits uh, from the Chinese uh, Science and Technology Minister in July 2019. You can find multiple examples of our research online, whether that is a case study from the Center of Process Innovation, or CPI, um, and their assistance and support for um, new ways of manufacturing virus-like particle polio vaccines, or highlights of Jason Hallett's technology, for example, use of ionic liquids that can maintain stable SARNA delivery within uh, at, at least 50 days at room temperature. Um, highlights of our scientists engaging with uh, the public um, and, and encouraging vaccine uptake. Highlights from hub researchers such as Rongjun Chen and Zoltan Kiss on the um, details of how China is able to manufacture vaccine to carry out their very impressive vaccine programs. Apologies, this is cut off, but a highlight of uh, a scientist, Kai uh, Hu in, in Robin Shattuck's lab um, on that him being from Wuhan and being a key integral part on researching and, and uh, developing a COVID-19 vaccine candidate amongst other examples whilst maintaining uh, strong and, and excellent uh, policies within our hub on to support mental health measures and uh, safeguarding as well as promoted by the EBSRC. So with that, uh, I'd like to hand over the control of the slides to uh, Martina from the Vax Hub. Thank you, Ben. So I'll be, try to be um, as quick as I can to leave as much time as we can to, the, to our uh, speakers. So running the hub has been an incredible journey, just taught me a lot about diff working, different working cultures, but also it's quite a large and complex system to run, like Ben highlighted. Our hub supports a program of research focusing on all aspects of vaccine manufacturing of benefit to developing countries. So ensuring the supply, translating new technologies to manufacturers and offering rapid response technologies in support of epidemic threat scenarios. Um, the hub essentially funds on-site researchers working on three main technologies, PLPs, viral vector and conjugate vaccines and uh, platform operations where essentially the hub acts as a funding body to advertise, select and award projects by competition. In our hub, UCL and Oxford are the two main hubs working together with different spokes, Imperial, Leeds University and the London School for Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. But we have interacted with different stakeholders and we have a group of members, uh, see them at the bottom, who routinely participate and engage with us, steering the research direction priorities. So this slide shows in, in numbers really the, the size and some of the outcomes that we have achieved as a team in the last three years. 
uh, despite some of the university closures, because of the fact that the hub really brings a critical mass of researchers working in a specific area, it attracts more funding uh, from different sources. So UK and abroad, so you see the figures is particularly high and we have running a number of different associated uh, projects. I'm, I'm not going to provide just a few more detail for some of these categories. So it's important to, to say, that um, our hub focus is not really to develop a vaccine against a specific pathogen, but to propose different vaccine technologies, but also different engineering approaches, potentially applicable to multiple vaccine development routes. So our work packages are very varied, focus on solutions to speed up process development, to supporting scalability, uh, development of assays, new approaches to formulations, but also computational tools, really with a high level of interactions between different partner uh, institutions. And you see some of the outcomes uh, um, at the right hand side. In my next slide, I'm going to just show us selected examples of projects we have funded. So some focus on one technologies in particular, like the work from Leeds and a polio candidate. Um, other aimed really to apply um, some novel methods, but applicable to all technologies. And we had informative technical webinars for our developing countries partners where you know, they could engage with all the proposed solutions. Some of these projects are ongoing. We are organizing actually a webinar series from all of these in fall. In terms of our training effort, so um, this was an important part of the Hubs Remit. Um, our aim in this space was twofold. So we supported places for, from our partners to participate in, dif in different courses offered in the UK, in the US, in Africa, um, which also provided excellent networking opportunities. But we also developed a program for our on-site researchers um, in addition to the technical program. So for example, some examples here on GMP, policy engagement, media and, and engagement, obviously given the number of requests and interests that we have from the press in the last few months. So, and the aim is to really repurpose some of these. We were planning one in Asia, so maybe um, we can do that by uh, before the, um, uh, the up ends. And finally, uh, we developed a number, oh, sorry, we developed a number of activities uh, um, to, to really engage our users group, like for example, webinar series, monthly newsletter, but also policy engagement activities. Uh, some of these, these are led by our policy advisor, Penny Michael, who is running this seminar today and including you know, participation to UN and WHO initiatives, uh, some, one of which is led by our next speaker, uh, Jis Wee Dong, uh, and we've published different media outreach articles and podcasts. We're planning a few more, so join our Twitter and uh, watch this space. I'm going to hand over to Ben uh, again for the next session. Great, thank you, Martina. Uh, if we can hand control to Jisui Dong, uh, the unit head for the WHO Local Production and Assistance Unit to provide holistic, strategic, and coordinated support to member states in strengthening sustainable local production of safe and effective medicines, vaccines, diagnostics, and other health products. Uh, Jisui, over to you. Yeah, let me try. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Ben. Let me try, I can move my slide. I think uh, it seems I have a little problem to move my slide. You are controlling. Um, just wait, I can do this for you. Just say next slide. Okay, uh, sorry for that. Thank you, Penny. So uh, my topic is a, a holistic approach to local vaccine production key success factors and the role of universities as enabling partner. So the COVID-19 pandemic represents an unprecedented global health challenge. In combating the pandemic, a lot has been achieved, but more needs to be done. COVID-19 vaccine has been developed at a groundbreaking speed today. Eight COVID-19 vaccines are listed by WHO for emergency use. As of 2nd June this year, over 1.6 billion vaccine doses has been administered globally. But more doses are needed and they are challenged to overcome to meet this, uh, this need. So what we learn from COVID-19 pandemic you can see first, 
we said we can leverage the existing uh, scientific knowledge and the research to speed up the discovery of the solutions to combat the virus. Research in the coronavirus post us hacked to identify the spike protein sooner. Second, a focused global effort hyped to reduce the time needed to develop and produce COVID-19 vaccine. Many stakeholders, including government and industries, the scientific and international communities, regulators, prioritized their effort to find effective vaccines and other tools to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. Third, the collaboration and the cooperation within the global community is key to facilitating the global effort. The gene sequence was shared. Resources were modi um, mobilized. Global initiatives such as ACT accelerators and the COVAX facility were established. Within the industry alone, over 270 partnerships were formed, of which 214 were related to COVID-19 vaccine production. Collaborations in the short and the medium term aim to increase COVID-19 vaccine production capacity and ensure equitable distribution of vaccine globally. In view of pandemic preparedness, long-term collaboration are essential to ensure that sufficient capacity is both generated and retained. Therefore, commercial viability is critical, absolutely critical, to ensure that this capacity is utilized on an ongoing basis and not lost. Next slide, please. So as we know, vaccine manufacturing is complex. The key elements for the sustainable production of a quality, safe, and effective vaccines. It is essential that a government have a long-term commitment to support local production by citing coherent policies, providing time-bound incentives, and building an enabling business ecosystem. A strong regulatory system is important to ensure quality, safety, and efficacy, and also enable timely market entry. Access to skilled workforce is critical, especially for vaccine production. However, the lack of a local expertise is a continuing challenge for low and middle income countries. Of course, partnership and collaborations are also essential to local vaccine production. For example, with over, one, with over 100 components, in vaccine production, partnerships with raw material suppliers are important in securing the supply. If one component does not come in time, production could be stopped and the batch may need to be discarded. Next slide, please. So what is the role of universities and the research programs play in combating COVID pandemic, and also in local production of vaccines. We say university and research programs contribute to local production of vaccines in many ways. I just listed three here. First, universities train people, skills development, and the provision of a codified talents are vital, are vital for vaccine development and production especially in low middle income countries. Universities with lack of pilot scale facilities could provide hand-on training to reinforce technical skills in manufacturing and quality control testing. Second, universities and research programs can drive innovation for new vaccines to treat new diseases. 
new vaccine formulations to suit the local context, such as for improved product stability outside of the cold chain, and for new manufacturing processes or technologies, for example, continuous production system to increase production output and at the same time maintain a small footprint, operational footprint, giving the strength of universities in discovery and innovation, they can support effective translation and adoption of new technologies by industry. Last but not least, universities can play a role in vaccine manufacturing using a hub and a spoke model with the university as a hub. Engaging universities on a continuous basis in the vaccine ecosystem could reduce the time frame to address future pandemics. As the partnerships and the shared knowledge within the ecosystems are already in place, as seen in the current COVID-19 pandemic, collaborating with universities and the research programs could help speed the development of products to tackle future pandemics. Next slide, please. So this slide show what WHO do in supporting member states to strengthen local production of vaccine and other health products to achieve quality and sustainability. So a new, a neutral strategic partnership with member states and different stakeholders, including universities and research programs. We conduct feasibility assessments to identify gaps and the proposed recommendations for sustainable local production. We support member states to develop and implement their national strategies and the roadmap to promote local production. We also provide, very importantly, needs-based capacity building and technical assistance. This may a resolution on strengthening local production was adopted by the 74th World House Assembly. More than 100 member states co-sponsored this resolution, which showed great interest and commitment in promoting local production by member states. There is also a new WHO initiative. We called the World Local Production Forum, WLPF in short. This forum will be regularly to provide the global community a global platform for open dialogue and collaboration and addressing key challenges in promoting local production and technology transfer to improve access and strengthening health security. We are currently convening the first WLPF which will take place from 21st to 25th this month. You are all welcome to attend. So next slide will show some examples of our work. I said we provide a lot of a tailored based training and technical assistance. Last year, we organized the first virtual uh, CGMP training marathon from September to November. It lasts three months, 12 weeks. Every week, there were one topics. So over 1,000 participants around the world attend attended each topic weekly. And this year, our training work focused on GMP in vaccine manufacturing, facility designs, and technology transfers. You can see on the right hand of the screen, there is a holistic um, strategy setting which we supported the, the, the member state like Ethiopia in the developing and implementing their national strategy and the roadmap in promoting local production. So a lot of progress has been seen in the countries and uh, um, we are still, uh, still uh, working with the government and uh, to implement this strategy as planned and also adapt the changing business envi environment. So with that, I thank you all.
Over to you. Thank you, Josue. What a, what a lovely presentation, and thank you for all you all of your contributions. Uh, I'd like to pass over to Dr. Neni uh, Nareni, Research and Development uh, Project uh, Senior Integration Manager for PT Biopharma uh, in Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Nareni was also part of the Research and Innovation uh, COVID-19 Task Force um, under the Ministry of Research and Technology of uh, the Republic of Indonesia. Uh, so Dr. Nareni, off to you. Uh Thank you, Ben, for the nice introduction, and thank you for the invitation. So today I would like to share our experience on the capacity building in the vaccine development through successful partnership with the Vax Hub. I cannot, yes, okay. So uh, let me uh, introduce our company in brief. So Biopharma is established uh, 130 years ago. So we uh, moved to Bandung. Uh, Bandung is located in uh, West Java, Indonesia, in here. And we are state-owned enterprise, 100%. We produce the vaccine and anti serum manufacture. Uh, uh, and also we implement uh, all the quality integrated uh, management system. So our vaccine uh, has listed uh, as a WHO pre-qualified vaccine. With the capacity uh, about 3 billion dose per year, we can supply our vaccine to more than uh, 150 countries in the world. Uh, so this is the list of the vaccine product from Biopharma. So uh, that uh, already uh, got the WHO PQ, sorry for that. <laughs> So, uh, I think maybe Penny, uh, can you help me to handle the slide? Thank you. Yeah, which slide would you like to go back to? Big, yes, big. This, this one. Okay, just tell me next slide when you want to move forward. A big, a big, Penny. Thank you. Go back, yeah. Yes, this is okay. So, uh, yeah, next slide. Okay, so uh, this is the list of the Biopharma vaccine uh, product that uh, has all the WHO uh, uh, pre qualified vaccine. So, there's 14 antigens, and then we also export our uh, API or active pharmaceutical ingredients also to the uh, other manufacturer in Asia. And recently, we got the uh, WHO emergency use listing uh, for the novel uh, oral polio vaccine type 2. Next slide, please. So this is the list of uh, assisting acquired vaccine technology platform that we got. So a live attenuated vaccine, inactive vaccine, subunit toxoid, subunit protein, and subunit recombinant protein and also polysaccharide conjugate vaccine. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is the, the strategy for the COVID-19 vaccine supply in Indonesia. So we have three strategies. In short term, uh, we focus on the uh, immediate supply. So what we have is to, to do the te uh, technology transfer population and filling utilizing COVID-19 vaccine bulk from the candidate partner. So in this case, we have collaboration with the Sinovac China and the uh, vaccine is already uh, got the uh, emergency use authorization in Indonesia and deploy uh, for the vaccine program in our population. In the midterm, our intention is to have the self-reliance in the vaccine starting from the upstream until downstream process. So uh, this is about the national capacity building. So we are together synergy with the ministries and institutions in, in Indonesia to develop the recombinant subunit protein. In the mid long term, we would like to acquire new platform technology for the vaccine production uh, and in collaboration with the Vax Hub, WHO and also uh, uh, CEPI and other international 
uh, institutions. Next slide, please. So uh, this is the uh, acquired new platform technology that we have. And then the pandemic is changed our landscape of the vaccine development. So we need uh, uh, the uh, rapid uh, response uh, platform technology. That's why Biopharma very interested to collaborate with the Vax Hub and other international institution to uh, gain the capacity building on production of the viral vector or RNA platform technology. Next slide. So we see that uh, the Vax Hub is very important uh, as an access to technology transfer, capacity building for improving response to future epidemic and pandemic. So our request is to access know-how from the vaccine hub, comprising of the vaccine seed and design, production process, QC methodology, and formulation technology. And of course, the capacity building to get the training to acquire expertise in rapid response technology, development of the vaccines against difficult pathogens and robust delivery system. Also regulatory oversight on the platform of the pandemic vaccine and support on the clinical trial activities. Next slide, please. So a uh, partnership, partnership with Facts Hub, we see that uh, it is very important for our researcher to increase the proportional, uh, professional uh, development by either by the PhD program. So we have the biopharma staff uh, in doctoral program in UCL and Oxford University, and also by a training course from the for the industry. Uh, for example, uh, uh, join the vaccine MBI course, the vaccinology course, uh, the vision leadership, and also the uh, process development and analytic uh, webinar series. Next slide, please. So it is uh, with the support from the uh, Flex Hub, uh, we got funding with the UCL for the Flex Hub feasibility study on the optimization of upstream process for the recombinant COVID-19 expressed in Tikia Pastoris. So general aim is to build the capacity of Indonesia to develop the SARS-CoV vaccine based on the recombinant uh, protein. So this feasibility study conduct from November last year until July this year. So the specific aim is to construct the vaccine antigens, develop it by process, and evaluate the quality of the antigens. Next slide, please. So this is the, uh, as you can see here, this is our target antigens is the receptor binding domain on the spike protein. So for the clone uh, preparation and clone development, we uh, collaborate with the University of Pajajaran in Bandung, uh, one of the uh, university uh, uh, in Indonesia. And then this uh, clone uh, has uh, already uh, sent to the UCL for the further development. So for uh, our status right now is in the clone expression and the optimization of the upstream process uh, using the design of experiment methodology and also con characterization. So once the parameter is uh, established, uh, we'll, we will implement this uh, parameter to produce the vaccine antigens in the uh, setting of the industry, industry. Next slide, please. So next step of our feasibility study is to continue the upstream optimization together with UCL and Biopharma, and then downstream optimization and quality control development uh, with the also Piranova and a primary preclinical that we would like to do the immunogenesis study in a mice model that uh, we'll conduct in a Biopharma. Next slide, please. So uh, the collaboration with UCL not only for the COVID-19, but also for dengue uh, vaccine production, because the dengue also a major health uh, problem in Indonesia. So our project goals is to uh, produce the recombinant uh, VLP uh, in Pikia Pastoris. And achievement to date is uh, we got the new vaccine prototype, adaptation of uh, developed uh, protocol, and also uh, USP process uh, optimizations in progress. Next slide, please. 
So with this, uh, I would like to thanks to all the uh, member of the COVID-19 research team in Biopharma, UCR research team, Salome and Ellie and Fax Hub team that uh, uh, really supportive in our collaboration. And thank you for your attention. Uh, back to you, Ben. Thank you, Nanny. A, a wonderful presentation and great example of collaborative efforts uh, between your team at Biopharma and UCL's Vax Hub. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Mohammed uh, Manol Ahsan from uh, Bangladesh, uh, from uh, Incepta in Bangladesh. Uh, Manol is uh, head of research at Incepta, uh, the largest uh, vaccine manufacturer in Bangladesh. He's been supervising several vaccine process development initiatives, including rabies, uh, rotavirus, cholera, and a number of other pathogens um, within uh, Incepta's uh, work streams. Um, so, Manol, if if I can hand over the control to you. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for the introduction. So basically, it's my pleasure to present in front of you. Uh, actually, it's, uh, yeah, it's working now. So at first, I would like to say a uh, glance about the Inceptor. Basically, we Inceptor was established in the year of 1999 as an Inceptor Pharmaceutical Limited. Now, after the inception of uh, five years of infection, we became the second largest company in Bangladesh. At present, we are producing 1,100 products uh, in, for local and industrial market. And at the moment, we are exporting our products to 74 countries, including United Kingdom. So the, the company started its uh, vaccine, vaccine, uh, vaccine business in 2011. We are the first and leading vaccine manufacturing company in Bangladesh. And it is the, uh, we have the state of art facility fully company to GMP. The requirement. So, I would like to say something about the infrastructure and capacity. We have a uh, production uh, for the bulk and still production. We have a 5 liter to uh, 100 uh, 500 liter pharmacy capacity with all supporting downstream processing. Tool. Recently, we also uh, installed a fixed bed bioreactor system from Universal. So, this is this facility is capable of to produce recombinant bacterial and viral vaccine. And our field in field finish capacity, we have four lines with capacity to, to fill around 1 billion doses yearly. Uh, if you consider in multiple format, uh, it can, we can, it can use the uh, bial, m full triple series or lifeless product. And for quality control, we have a dedicated lab for analytical and microbiology. Also, we have a dedicated animal house for in vivo testing. And it is probably the largest animal house in the country. We have a dedicated R&D lab. The R&D lab is uh, equipped with modern fermenters up to 990 liters also, and fixed by director, along with uh, downstream processing equipment. We have a dedicated area for handling virus and bacteria, and also for recombinant work. Can I give the previous slide? Yeah. So initially, we started the business with the uh, field finished product. So we have eight vaccine and five inhumane globules in the local market. But in parallel, in the year of 2012, we started our own R&D. So from the R&D, so far we have developed five products, which are in detail. Uh, for uh, our first product, the uh, Ingovax SYW, which is basically meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine. This vaccine we got the, uh, we obtained the licensing is in Bangladesh, which is already now in the Bangladesh market. Then then, and second one is hepatitis B. So this is basically yeast, um, BNP based uh, vaccine produced in yeast, but the clone actually we haven't developed the clone. We procured the uh, clone from third party, but the fermentation and purification we developed. So that's, this vaccine is also got the license in Bangladesh. Our third one is cholera vaccine, we also got the license in Bangladesh. So our rabies vaccine, which is developed in uh, a scale smartphone from Universal Belgium, we recently just finished the uh, clinical trial. So, which is about to we'll, uh, get the so, uh, license in quarter three of the, this year. So our typhoid consumed vaccine, which will enter the uh, clinical in the quarter three of, uh, quarter three of this, this year. And our meningococcal consumed vaccine, which will enter the preclinical in quarter three. So in addition to this, we, are also, we have many more uh, uh, products in the R&D development stage mainly human papillomavirus vaccine, uh, uh, and pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, measles rubella, and also CRM1 and 7, which is a carrier protein. 
and also now good for sustainability and also to, we are now focusing on the platform technology development targeting the sars cov2 mainly mrna and protein subunit vaccine so in the though we had a we had a product hepatitis b based and i told you earlier that we didn't develop the clone so we wanted to develop a uh, east based platform technology at inceptor uh, that's why we actually collaborated with the imperial hub and we started the training in uh, 2019 in the dr karen college lab in the uh, chemical engineering so our pri pri primary target was to develop a uh, l1 l human papillomavirus l1 based blp for all 6 11 16 and 18 serotonin also to develop a crm on mentioning protein which is basically a carrier protein uh i uh, used in black conjugate vaccine so during uh, this training we utilize uh, uh, actually we try to uh, try to develop the yeast expresses of which which can secrete the protein into a supernatant so we utilize the ip3 uh, ip3 plasmid which is uh, and which has got a uh, modified alpha alpha factor for secretion and also using the wild type wild type is a strain so during those training we develop four we express uh, all the uh, four uh, uh, all four types of the hpv as one for express uh, expression and now which is produced uh, actually now we got the clone which is express uh, also crm1 and seven so all the five clone uh, the from we got the material from the from the imperial in the in 2019 in october so after receiving this clone So at Inceptor, we we developed the fermentation and purification process at 10 liter scale. Uh, if you have a look here for HPV uh, BLP for 18, in under the both reducing condition, the HPV L1 you can see in the this is one of band which is appear around 250 kV. That that uh, that suggests that this is not the BLP. And if you have a look the uh, size expression HPLC. We compared the uh, we compared with the, um, the reference BLP, and you can see the reference BLP uh, um, retention time and at the hours one is, is is different. So from this period era, we assume that the L1 protein does not uh, self assemble into BLP. Instead, it expresses as pentamers. Though here uh, electron microscopic data is missing. So this this is for has to be 18. We got the similar level for other three types. in this context we have decided to offer intracellular expression in yeast so for intracellular expression basically now we are utilizing a commercially available platform pc shipping platform uh, which is basically uh, yeah so we are we are trying to uh, express the protein uh, intracellularly at the moment we are we are we are cloning the proton optimus uh, l1 protein into the into the vector so basically now we are utilizing what we have been learning from the imperial toys now we are implementing at incepta so now i will i will that this this work also supported by the imperial hub so now basically i will move i will move to our second project crm197 so after receiving the clone we developed the fermentation and purification at 10 liter scale and you can see after purification we got a very nice and pure 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 product and we compared the our product with the commercially available product in in, in hplc and found the retention rate almost same that means it has the same tri dimensional structure so after after i told you this crm197 basically is used in like a conjugate vaccine in in conjugation so uh, then we try to whether the is direct is direct crm197 can be used in conjugation to answer this question basically We develop a typhoid VI, uh, VI uh, typhoid typhoid conjugate vaccine uh, with the yeast derived serum, and we also assess the immunogenicity in mice. If you have a look after the first uh, first dose, first dose uh, uh, after the first dose, the unconjugated VI and conjugation VI, you can see there is a difference of the response and the VI IgG response, which is more uh, about uh, five times more compared to the if you compare to the unconjugated one. but after giving the second dose booster dose you can see there's a difference and also uh, there is a booster difference which is basically benchmark of a protective typhoid uh, conjugate vaccine 
so this is here i would like to mention one thing is th this is the first report the expression of shear amount and symptom in, in east which was previously um, and anecdotally suggested not to be possible so basically this work is unique uh, we already yesterday you already submitted a manuscript to the journal for publication so basically this is the update from our actually inceptor and imperial hub director project so so here actually i would like to thanks uh, department uh, department of health and social care for their funding i hope they will keep continue this type of funding for um, for uh, in future also i would like to thanks uh, imperial college team especially robin shadow karen karen roshel and ben uh, finally i would like to thanks professor nicola stonhouse at university of leeds thank you very much for listening thank you man a, a wonderful presentation and a great uh, example of the, the exciting promise of, of picky pastoris um, following uh, nanny's presentation as well from my side, a massive thank you to Karen Polizzi and Rochelle all for their excellent uh, collaborative um, support. I'd like to hand over uh, for the next presentation, which is Dr. Uh, Do Tuan Dat, president of the company for vaccine and biological production number one, or for biotech, a state-owned company belonging to the Ministry of Health of Vietnam. For biotech has produced several uh, vaccines such as recombinant hepatitis B, cell culture-based hepatitis A, inactivated Japanese encephalitis, and oral uh, cholera vaccines, and another uh, collaborator core member within uh, the Imperial Hub. Uh, please, Dr. Dat. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ben. And uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon here in Vietnam. And um, and uh, today we want to talk about that kind of uh, bacterial virus expression system is the new platform for pandemic vaccine development transferred to Vietnam. And um, it's that uh, kind of support from the kind of um, FPMR um, hub. And uh, right now we, we have some kind of soft introduction about our company. Is that the uh, Vibiotech is a one company in state owner company belong to Minister of Health of Vietnam. We are kind of leading company in Vietnam for manufacturing, trading, researching, and developing a wide range of vaccine and biological for human use. We are kind of big uh, vaccine manufacturer and supplier for our EBI in Vietnam. Our health kind of force key product, commercialized product right now is that uh, hepatitis A vaccine, orange cholera vaccine, Japanese encephalitis vaccine, and kind of uh, hepatitis B vaccine. On kind of vaccine we have followed that kind of inactivated uh, vaccine and also is that kind of recombinant vaccines. Uh, we also have some kind of activity like the ID activity to develop our own vaccine and commercialize in our country like kind of um, uh, our commercialized vaccine and also develops a new vaccine based on the um, uh, uh, cell, cell based vaccine, like the rabies vaccine and also the influenza vaccine. Uh, we know that the kind of challenges for pandemic vaccine development right now for, uh, is that the kind of we could um, not uh, predict the uh, nature of the emergence, uh, em emerging pathogens and time for vaccine development and also for costs uh, associated with vaccine development and production and how the kind of production capacity and also for how the kind of global distribution and vaccination. It for that kind of developing country, it's that uh, is that like the COVID vaccine is that a question for us is that how the kind of technology is that kind of developing country can can go for the kind of vaccine development. Right now, like COVID vaccine, we have the kind of different kind of the platform like the live attenuated, inactivated, viral vector, vector protein by the vaccine and nuclear acid acid uh, vaccine and DNA and mRNA vaccine. Uh, is that so? Is that one of the kind of uh, very challenges for, for, for the pandemic vaccine in the developing country? It's how we can go for last game production. It's like the kind, how we can help the kind of ZMP facility has the know how, method, and the kind of productivity high in. And also, we talk about that kind of sorted uh, uh, resource. Uh, we can have like material, have equipment, and uh, also supply chain or something like that. And it's so important one is new platform and technology, how the kind of 
so manufacturer can agree to develop vaccine. Uh, it here the, uh, we we have to follow the kind of um, collaboration with uh, uh, some uh, uh, university in UK for the um, uh, FVMR hub. Uh, like the Imperial uh, College London and also the kind of Bristol University, we, we could go for the new platform for bacterial virus system. How we can choose that kind of system for vaccine development is some advantages you can have, like the kind of serum free suspension control, and how it can have the kind of effective lead bacterial virus vector contraction, and also we have the high yield control and we, we can uh, easy to, to, to increase and improve uh, for industri industrial scan applicability. And that kind of, um, of uh, vaccine platform is shaped because it's non-infected and non-replicated uh, vaccine. Uh, our reason, we, we already have the kind of expressed uh, our um, uh, is that kind of spy protein, it could spy protein on that kind of platform based on particular viral vector. And we also developed the kind of um, uh, production post that uh, from the beginning, like the kind of cell bank, like the kind of cell seed virus, and also go for the kind of on the up, down, upstream and downstream post that and also formulation. We have the, some uh, reason we, we go for big on data and like the guy, some, some kind of animal like a mine is the hamster for, for challenges and also is that for monkey. It here we can see some reason we have for, for that kind of mine uh, is that like the BINT um, tighter for, for that kind of uh, uh, dosage. Right now we use it like 10 microgram of as the protein is that very high, that kind of um, BI uh, is that the, the high tighter of the, the NTS, the um, uh, high tighter BINT, and uh, also follows the day, so uh, 40, uh, from 46. And also, is that the kind of um, cellular immunity or also good and compare the own more focus on TX1, like the IFs, um, IFs and ANFA, and um, also we, we have lows the focus on TX2, like the EN4, we can, we can see for humor and cellular um, um, immunity for that kind of uh, vector virus vector vaccine. Uh, we, we think that the uh, we think that the plan for the uh, near future right now, we can, can develop the kind of new COVID vaccine again, a variant based on the uh, uh, BVES platform. Um, we think that the kind of uh, project, we also get the new support uh, from the uh, FEMR hub. And, and, and we can have the kind of uh, quick uh, data from big on data should, should be uh, coming soon uh, before we can end on the September this year. And uh, also we can move to to next the clinical trial from the accomplished uh, on, on the kind of big on data for the, our vaccine candidate as a booster and variant vaccine. And also we can, uh, based on that, our platform, we can develop the new vaccine like flu, rabies, and other pandemic vaccine uh, based on that kind of new platform. And that uh, we can approach to new platform for, for pandemic vaccine development, such as other viral vector and nuclear seed platform also. And uh, the, le the lesson we should learn from the, that collaboration is that of how faster the vaccine manufacturer from developing country could approach to new modern technology and the, how the quick the kind of vaccine manufacturer from developing country could be applied new platform for cell production for pandemic vaccine in their country with probably a buried scale and like last scale. Okay, we have the, some acknowledgement uh, to Imperial College London and um, FPMR Hub, like Robin Satat, uh, Benjamin Pierce, and uh, also is that University of the Bristol and uh, Professor Amber Berger, uh, Rebbe and Parisa, 
and uh, also that kind of book from biotech they can come to UK to learn more about the technology and also apply good technology to Vietnam like Mr. Chow and Tian and uh, many times for, for, for all of you. Thank you for your attention. Over to you, Ben. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dat, and thank you to all the speakers of, of today's uh, session two. I'd like to introduce you to uh, two other hub members that will join as panelists for the Q&A session. Uh, there's Rochelle All, uh, an early career researcher in Karen Polizzi's lab at uh, Imperial College London and part of the Imperial Hub. And a welcome to Professor uh, Ellie Kushavarts Moore, a professor of bioprocess science and enterprise from the Department of Biochemical Engineering and part of the VAX Hub. We've seen an example of her uh, collaborative work within the VAX Hub uh, from uh, Dr. Nani Narani's uh, presentation um, earlier in the session. So for the speakers and panelists, please do unmute your microphones. Feel free to turn on your video as well. Uh, I would first like to uh, ask a question. This, this was uh, selected with the help of Paul Katenwe from uh, the Uganda Viral Inst Research Institute in Uganda. So thank you, Paul. Um, Rochelle, uh, we've seen uh, some of your collaborations within the Imperial Hub uh, in, in, in uh, working with researchers from Incepta, and it'd be really great to hear your response to a question from Stephen Morris. Could you comment on the role of academic institutions to provide training in vaccine development and manufacturing to provide talented personnel needed for the expansion, of de uh, expansion development, and manufacturing capacity in the future? Uh, Rochelle? Thanks, Ben. Um, I think it's so, like, we've heard a lot of examples right now of how important the collaborations are in terms of driving forward not only novel techniques that might not be available in these low to middle income countries, but also taking techniques that we have and technology that we have and transferring them to manufacturing capabilities, which we might not have as an academic institution. So the advantages come from both sides of it, from obviously like from our exposure to it, we're working with Manuel in SEPTA, you know, we've managed to get publications out of this. Some of their staff came over and trained with us for several months, and they have now been able to take that information back with them so that they themselves can lead this technology on further. Also, um, as an early career researcher, this has been great exposure for me. Um, I have, like you've mentioned previously, been involved in the DCVMN a workshop with some other researchers from uh, Bristol University, where we had the opportunity to train vaccine manufacturers from all over the world on different aspects of it. And I feel that it's really important to look at it from a broader picture. Um, I, there's been a lot of conversations about disconnect between academia and industry. And, you know, as an early career researcher, I've gained a lot of information on how this all fits in together and potential roles to take that forward in the future as well. Uh, thank you, Rochelle. Uh, thanks, thanks, for your, thanks for your response. It's really an um, uh, interesting response. Um, turning to uh, Professor Keshevarts Moore, um, could you please uh, let us know your response to how is connecting with vaccine manufacturers supported uh, manufacturing capacity uh, on the other side, that is within the UK? I think this is an interesting question because vaccine has been something which has not been in the uh, public eye uh, because of all the diseases which have been vaccinated for, apart from the ones that we give to our very young children, have been in other parts of the world. And all of a sudden in the UK, where uh, this pandemic, which has been unfortunately <laughs> uh, affected a lot of people globally, <laughs> Uh, maybe there's what is sort of a silver lining, and the silver lining of it is that um, we become, we in the UK and other countries uh, have become very much aware that this is not just a localized problem, but it's a global problem. Uh, UK has always been very big with vaccines, if we go, go back to the times of uh, Jenner, if I could say that. So we really have in our DNA in this country to be able to work with things like that. And of course, that was quite big during the when Welcome was a company in its own right. Uh, and somehow it sort of uh, petered off a bit. Uh, but now it is obvious that this is important to deal with it. But what has, one thing which has been particularly interesting is the 
understanding of the importance of having manufacturing in the public eye. Uh, usually when you look at the media and when you read in the media, there always been uh, how wonderful it is to have a new cure for uh, cancer or whatever. And this idea of the manufacturing part, which is a very important part of the overall supply chain, it doesn't sound, has not been very interesting to the public, but now they're aware of it. They're aware of how important it is to have um, the capacity to do so, but also the training of the people in place. And if you look at, for instance, UCL, since I work at UCL in biochemical engineering, it has been one of the pioneers of effectively manufacturing and providing the ac academic support needed to enable uh, early technology to be translated into real products. And um, I think that the new initiatives which are being put in, put, put in place in the UK uh, is testimony to the fact that this is something that we need in this country. I think before uh, all of this COVID and so forth, I think we, we had only two places. I'm not talking about the um, uh, contract manufacturing setups where they have to change uh, depending on who their client is, but more in terms of the vaccine base. We had two places and I think one of them was just uh, fill and finish. And now we realize that we really need to have that capacity in-house. Uh, I don't know whether I answered your question, but I hope I've got some way to answer it anyway. Well, um, I certainly uh, enjoyed hearing your response. I think that I think there's a lot to learn from that, and and it'd be great to hear more from you and and other experts like you to to hear how we can invest better for the future yeah. and to support you. improved UK manufacturing. Um, moving towards questions that uh, focus on developing countries, if I could ask uh, Josue Dong. Uh, what kind of technology and related support uh, might be needed to de-risk or increase sustainability of vaccine manufacturing in developing countries? And who should be investing in this? Um, the very good question. Uh, manufacturers in low and middle income countries face challenges in the local production of a vaccine. So many of them lack capacity in meeting GMP requirements and in um, receiving and absorbing technologies for vaccine production. There is also a need to ensure that a cost competitive vaccines is uh, produced. This will help to ensure long-term business viability and retention of a production capacity. So technologies and uh, support relating to these areas in, particularly, uh, in particular would be of significant value. For instance, automating production processes uh, reduce the risk of a human intervention and error, therefore could help companies to meet the quality standards. Technologies like a support flexibility of a production, for example, uh, inclusion of uh, vaccines and uh, bio biologics manufacturing, uh, this feeds into the utilization of a capacity, therefore ensure sustainability. And the vaccine manufacturers in low and middle income countries could uh, of course benefit from this mRNA technologies as it has advantage over other um, platforms. Uh, for instance, uh, it is rapid, in inexpensive, and uh, scalable manufacturing with a high production output, and also uh, with a high efficacy, and it's uh, safe. So all this, uh, in terms of the support and uh, investment, need to be de-risk and increase sustainability. It should be suited to the local and the regional context. Uh, there's no one size uh, fit all approach. Uh, all relevant regarding who should invest, I would like to say all relevant uh, actors have a role uh, to support and invest in this development. Uh, low and middle income countries can be very much uh, impacted economically and uh, socially by pandemics and with a long recovery timelines. So government could invest first. 
uh, things, this can be considered as insurance against a future pandemic, uh, future pandemics. <laughs> Money invested now could provide return in the future. Manufacturer, of course, can invest related like GMP facility or this during this process and activities. Universities and the research program could provide a strong support on the need-based innovation, could train personnel. In international organizations like WHO and other organizations can invest and play a role based on their experiences, expertise, and the mandate. Of course, the donors, very important, could also invest. As the COVID-19 tell us, no one is safe until everyone is safe. So it is fundamental that support and investment are provided in a holistic, strategic, and collaborative manner. So with that, I over to you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. What a, what a uh, comprehensive response. Thank you so much. Um, in the interest of time, we need to be drawing the Q&A to a close, uh, but I want to uh, respond to one, a number of questions that have popped up in the Q&A, particularly on technology transfer to African countries. And I'll read this out as uh, Professor Sarah Gilbert has responded uh, to the question, what would be the main challenges for technology transfer to African countries? And Sarah has mentioned that the new technologies require different manufacturing infrastructure to older vaccines, but new equipment can certainly be installed if the funding is there. There must also be investment in ensuring that the quality management system is up to date and lab cap capabilities for all in process and release testing is, is there as well. Um, so thank you, Sarah, for helping to respond to that question. Could we hear very briefly, 20 seconds each perhaps, um, from Dr. Dat, Manuel and Nenny, as to what have you received from working within the hub system that you would not have otherwise? Uh, Dr. Dad? Uh, okay, thank you, Ben. And I think that uh, from the hub, we can uh, get that kind of, firstly, that kind of new technology, new platform. It is so important to us. Um, uh, we should apply for easy to, to develop the kind of new vaccine and at least for that kind of pandemic vaccine and COVID vaccine right now. For, for that kind of platform, we could not work before, but right now the people here can master that kind of technology by the vector vaccine. It's so, so important to us. And at least we can apply that kind of vaccine to develop the kind of new, new vaccine. Like the Mrs. Dong had talked about that kind of sustainable for that kind of sustainability for the vaccine manufacturer is so important. But I think that technology is so important also for, for both the vaccine manufacturer in the developing country. Thank okay. you, Dr. Dan. Uh, Nenny, may I ask you the same question? Please, just 20 okay. seconds, perhaps. Okay, thank you, Ben. So uh, the collaboration with Facts has been very essential. We have opened the access of the vaccine technology and global network, and also uh, for biopharma, the knowledge transfer from the Fax Hub uh, help our scientists to improve their fundament, uh, fundamental knowledge for uh, process operations and grow our confidence yeah, in troubleshooting and exploring new methods for the optimization uh, beyond standard our practice. So this is building essential expertise within our company. And uh, furthermore, uh, uh, I also... Uh, uh, get the insight in efficient optimization methodology that uh, we got from the Fax Hub using downscaling uh, approach that can reduce significant costs for the vaccine development. Of course, uh, this is very critical consideration uh, of our region, uh, considering the, the, the region that we supply. I think that's from me. Ben. Thank, thank you, Nani. Mano, last word, please. Very, very brief, if you can. Basically, I would say here acceleration with what we learned basically each execution system. Basically, with our partnership with the Karen Lab, we have successfully acquired the use execution system to produce BLP and other products. After the initial training, uh, actually, we, we, we developed it, then we established a team at Vincepta, which are now capable of you know, uh, work with the each execution system. So, basically, we, there actually, we really, uh, really acknowledge the candidate support from the Imperial Hub. So without their support, 
could me able to so easily to establish such platform at inception. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, and thank you to all the speakers and panelists that have joined today's session. Very uh, interesting. And thank you so much for your contributions and collaborative uh, spirits. Um, so